Hey guys, Cha Chan here, and today's video I'm building my first Gundam. I've never built a Gundam kit before, and I never expressed interest in building one until I saw this little guy in the Travelling Man at York yesterday, and I was like, he's kind of cute. I kind of want to build him. He's only £8.40, so <laughs> I got him, and he took me just over an hour to build, so not very long at all. So I just uh, added this to my, my figure collection collection section. That was a lot of repeating words in that sentence, but it, it makes sense grammatically, right? <laughs> but anyway, I added it to my collection section. And when I was looking on its little listing, I was like, oh, it's actually from a show, I think. I didn't actually click on what it's from, but it is from some kind of anime thing. <laughs> Uh, it might be a... I think it's an animation, it probably is, but anyway, uh, I haven't watched it. I probably won't watch it, I just wanted to build a little guy, so I built a little guy, and uh, he looks very cute on my desk. He's just so small, and I like him. <laughs> I don't really watch Gundam animes. I've seen Evangelion, but I didn't actually finish it. I kind of lost interest. <laughs> I mean, I know it's... everyone seems to like Evangelion, but I'm just not a big fan myself, you know? I, I can watch it, but I don't don't seek it out to watch it very often. Actually, I haven't watched it in like 10 years or something, but you know, it's alright. <laughs> the only kind of mecha anime that I do watch, or kind of mecha adjacent anime I should say, is Samurai Pizza Cats. That has some kind of big robot designs in, and the main characters are all little robot cats. Uh, it was a show I used to watch when I was little, and I still love it, so I have my little Samurai Pizza Cats figures, and I think that Sinanju here will look good next to my uh, Pizza Cat figures. Unfortunately, that shelf is quite full of trinkets and little anime plastic toys, so maybe I'll have a reshuffle and see what I can do. <laughs> but yes, I had a lot of fun building Sinanju. And he, as I said, he didn't take very long, just over an hour to build, which I think is pretty good considering this was my first time building a Gundam. I am using the stickers that came with the kit. I was thinking about painting the details, but I was like, I just kind of want to get this done. Like, n not like because I didn't want to do it, I did want to do it, I was very excited to do this. The day that I bought it, I was like, oh, I can't wait to get home and do this, but it, it was going to be late by the time I got home, so I didn't. Then the next day I was like, oh, it's time to build him, yay! <laughs> uh, so I had a lot of fun building him, but for the sake of relaxation and not having to get out all the paints and wait for sealants to dry and all that kind of stuff, I just used the stickers because I was not going to spend hours upon hours spraying him with Mr. Super Clear and then painting it and sealing it again. I couldn't be bothered. Uh, I do have the materials to do painting, but I just didn't want to. Anyway, uh, I did also kind of get this as a practice kit because I have the big Millennium Puzzle kit from Bandai to do, and I got that the other day in the post, and I, I'm so excited to do it. I am a little bit like scared because it looks kind of daunting, but doing this little model kit first kind of uh, reassured me that they are simple enough to put together. Some people have even said that the Millennium Puzzle is a good beginner kit, so I'll, I guess I'll see when I actually put it together probably tomorrow I'll start on that. It's quite a big kit compared to this. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was surprised to find that the little ball joints are actually like a softer vinyl material. I thought it would all be hard plastic, but not some of the grey parts, the little grey ball pieces, those are all softer plastic. And then all the red and the other grey pieces are the hard plastic. The model doesn't weigh very much either, it's very, very lightweight. But anyway, 
Uh, I think I would like to build a couple more Gundams at some point. I don't know when or which ones. I have kind of earmarked one. I found a Sun Wukong, the Monkey King based one. Don't know if he's a character from something or not. Like, I know Sun Wukong is a character in himself, but I mean if that robot is from something I don't know. But I might, I might get him and have a little build, maybe. Not sure. <laughs> I don't think I want to invest hundreds of pounds into this hobby because I've got other hobbies to invest money in as well, so I don't want to, you know, go crazy in this one. Um, I mean, anime figure collecting is my other hobby, one one of my other hobbies, I should say, and uh, that that gets pretty pricey, and you know, it, it's not um, it's not something you can really afford to do every week or anything. So, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I would like to not get too much into building Gundams, as fun as they are, or at least as fun as they seem from building this one. I'll probably build a couple here and there, maybe I'll film them, maybe I won't, and I'll continue collecting my anime figures as my main thing. Yeah. But no, it was so fun building this. Uh, the clippers that I'm using here are not really, like, good. <laughs> I kind of struggled to cut through some of the plastic here and there. The clippers, I think they're used as nail clippers to be honest. <laughs> Uh, we keep the nail clippers in the cupboard downstairs and I was like, that's the closest thing to what other people are using that I can find. Oh, we had some like big massive clippers that are used for wire, but those are too big. I mean, you wouldn't have been able to fit them in the little gaps to cut out the plastic pieces. But uh, aside from using the clippers, I did also notice that if you cut one or two of the little um, like plastic pegs, you can just kind of twist the piece out. So that made things a little bit easier. Also, using the clippers isn't too great on my wrist, you know, with tendonitis, it's not, not brilliant. So maybe if I get some new clippers, it'll be a bit easier as well. Some sharper ones might be nicer, so I'll probably go and get some today, because I'm going out today. It's currently the next day from when I filmed that little intro section and this video. So um, I'm going out today, probably, unless plans change. So I'll go and see if I can get some new clippers, because uh, I'd like to get some new nice clippers to do my Millennium Puzzle, and uh, maybe I'll see if I can find any little robots to build. Who knows? Anyway, um, yeah, I am running out of things to say, and I've got like half of this video left to fill with words and talking, and I don't really have a clue what I'm meant to be saying, because I did not plan this. As usual. <laughs> I would speed this video up more, but if I speed it up more than it's already sped up, then my computer lags and it doesn't like it very much, so we're just doing this fast, which is, I think, times five on my little program. I'm using Shotcut to edit. Yeah, maybe I should have thought of something I could have talked about. Oh, I know what I can talk about. Um, I could tell you about my first anime face, Kigurumi anime gal that I'm making. Um, but there is a section coming up in a few seconds with some audio, and I can't remember how I edited this video. Apparently, you need to hear this audio in the next few seconds. We'll find out what that is in a, in a couple of seconds, because I can't remember. So, here we go. That's why we don't use scissors. I remember it was the calico cat. This cat, she comes over, she's not our cat. She's not our cat, but she comes over and you could hear her there sitting outside meowing. This, I'm upstairs, my window was open, but she was meowing so loudly. I could, I was like, oh, little cat. So I did go out and I gave her some pets and some attention, gave her some beef. She likes beef. So um, 
expensive taste for a cat. <laughs> um, but no, I, I went and I gave some attention and then I came back to finish building my model. But yes, uh, the calico cat has been around today as well. She sat on my shoulders. She likes to be up. She likes to cuddle, but she does not sit still. She must be moving at all times. So you'll let her on your knee and then she'll just squirm around. Not because she's uncomfortable, just because she does not know how to sit still. <laughs> but no, she's so cute. Uh, sometimes on like later on in the night when she still comes over and comes in, we let her have a nap on the in the kitchen on the chairs. She's allowed in the kitchen. Not in the rest of the house though, because my mum is allergic and also I don't want cat fur hair all over my workroom because I don't want to get, you know, clients with allergies and wear fur suits when you know, it wouldn't be very good. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> sometimes later on the night when she wants to have a nap on the kitchen chair, I will get my steel tongue drum, which is a musical instrument thing, and I'll start playing it and she runs to the little chair and she climbs up and she sits and she goes to sleep while I play my tongue drum. It's so cute. She's so cute. Anyway, I was going to tell you about my first anime gao kigurumi that I'm making because I just got the 3D print the other day. I asked my boyfriend's mum to print it for me. Oh, I paid her, obviously. <laughs> it took 52 hours to print, apparently. That's uh, about average, you know. A little bit longer than some other masks take to print that I've seen online, but um, you know, it is quite big. It's a large print. I did 10 and a half inches tall, I think, because um, I wanted there to be some wiggle room for my face, and it's big enough on the inside that, so far, so far, I can wear my um, like good filtration mask under it, so when I go to conventions I don't have to worry about COVID quite as much as I would if I was just wearing a different mask. Um, the mask that I have and like to wear is an RZ mask, which is an American company and they're ridiculously hard to get in the UK because they um, the new VAT laws mean that they can't sell to the UK very easily. Stupid UK government. <laughs> um, but no, it's so hard getting those filters in the UK. But anyway, point is, the mask turned out really well. I did have it printed in black because I'm going to be painting it anyway. I've got to paint it and sand it. Well, I thought I was going to sand it, but uh, turns out that the 3D printing plastic, it's really hard to sand. <laughs> Maybe I'm just weak, but... It was not sanding very well. I did a little test on the top of the head where it's not going to be visible. I was like, ah, this is not sanding very well. <laughs> I would be sat there for literally hours upon hours upon hours of sanding. And I'm not, I'm not about that, especially not with my wrists as they are with the tendonitis. Um, so what I did is yesterday I ordered some Mr. Surfacer, which is a Mr. Hobby product. And that should help with filling in some of those ridges and smooth the surface, if it, if it works. If. <laughs> um, I'm also going to be using Milliput to fill in some of the bigger areas. And sanding. I'll sand a bit because the Mr. Surfacer and the Milliput are sandable, whereas the 3D printing plastic is a nightmare to sand and doesn't really like to be sanded. So that's my plan with that. Uh, I also have to drill out the mouth, because I did an open mouth sculpt on this mask. It's a Yugi that I'm making, by the way, I'm making a Yugi Muto cosplay. Um, and I don't like to show my face, so I thought the best next option would be to make a anime gao kigurumi. So that's what I did. Oh, I'm doing. Anyway, I did an open mouth sculpt on it, and I have to figure out a way to <laughs> like drill the mouth out, because I couldn't, I couldn't punch a hole in it in my software that I use. I use Sculptress. So, um... Yeah, I used a base model I found on Thingiverse of a Len Kagame face mask thing. And um, so I had my eye holes, but no mouth holes. So <laughs> I have to cut that one out myself, but that's all right. Anyway, we're almost at the end of the video. You can see I've almost finished building Sh Shinanju. Shinanju. Uh, it's written as Shinanju on the, in the um, Japanese alphabet. Is it Hiragana? I think? Or was it Katakana? I can't remember which one's on the box. Anyway, point is... This is Sinanju. He's so cute. Look at him. He's so small. <laughs> I had so much fun building him and I am really excited to build another Gundam. I don't know which one I'm going to get. Probably the Monkey King one that I was talking about, but we don't know yet. I don't know. I might just find one today. If I go out, I might see one that I like and get it. 
Who knows? Probably not, though. But anyway, here, here he is. He is with Yugi, because I have him on my desk. <laughs> and we are nearing the end of the video, so I should sign off. I hope you enjoyed my ramblings. Please do not hit the like button, as that probably hurts. It's not very nice. So maybe shake his hand instead. With that being said, I hope to see you in the next video. And bye!